GOP presidential hopeful Vivek Ramaswamy seems to be getting exactly what he wants following Wednesday's debate. Lots and lots of media attention. Amongst Ramaswamy's surprising supporters, Megyn Kelly and Glenn Greenwald. Those two appeared on Kelly's show and agreed that Ramaswamy's diagnosis of the Great Replacement Theory as a policy of the Democratic Party is correct. Take a listen. I listed the things that Vivek said, like January 6th was an inside job and this. And the one thing he said in there that I will give him is the Great Replacement Theory is a Democrat thing. It's not a Republican thing. He's 100 percent right about that. But the Democrats will never admit that. They want to say talkers are racist and I'm sure Vivek's a racist. Vivek's a Nazi. The Great Replacement Theory is 1000 percent a Democratic Party idea. There are Democratic mm -hmm. Party operatives, mainstream ones who wrote books saying that the key to an enduring permanent Democratic Party majority is ensuring that we have so much immigration that it changes the demographic composition of our country. And these newly arrived immigrants will forever be Democrats and there'll be no way for us to lose elections because of these demographic shifts. Not everyone was as impressed as Megyn Kelly and Glenn Greenwald with Ramaswamy's performance. However, CNN's Van Jones claimed he was, quote, literally shaking during Vivek's comments and said it was just one step away from Nazi propaganda. Let's watch that. And the smug, condescending way that he just spews this poison out yeah. is very, very dangerous because he won't stop Trump, but he's going to outlive Trump by about 50 years. And you're watching the rise of an American demagogue that is a very, very despicable person. Yeah. And I, I'm, I literally, I, I, was, I was shaking listening to him talk, because a lot of people don't know, that is one step away from Nazi propaganda coming out of his mouth. Not one to let a good opportunity pass him by, Ramaswamy countered Jones by posting a clip from 2021 in which Jones appears to be actively pushing the Great Replacement Theory himself. And that's basically the request from the racial justice left, is that we want the white majority to go from being a majority to being a minority and like it. That's a tough request. So there you go. Uh, you've got Van Jones saying that he's shaking because Vivek Ramaswamy pointed out something that Jones himself has said. Uh, I think this is one of those interesting things where we see not just the electoral political battles and sort of the ideological battles play out, but also the rhetorical battle. And you've seen Democrats on the left for a very long time use this phrase as a way to, again, demonize conservatives, demonize Republicans, as we saw with them doing now against uh, Ramaswamy. But it's one of those things where if you just look at what the left is saying, they're often the ones that are pushing this, specifically the Democratic Party has, as Glenn Greenwald pointed out in that clip we showed from Megyn Kelly's show, this is something that Democrats have talked about and sort of even fantasized about for a long time, which is if they have a situation where they can't with the current sort of demographic makeup of the United States reliably win elections, which obviously the election of Donald Trump sort of pointed out the issue that they seem to have with that. They're just going to sort of change everything. They can't do it through redistricting. They can't do it through, you know, voter laws. Instead, they're just going to try to import more people. And I think, you know, as Glenn Greenwald was pointing out, it's something that is not a new idea, uh, but it's one that has been used more as a weapon against conservatives and the right recently. Yeah, I like that you point out the rhetorical battle facet of this, because it feels like everyone's talking past each other there between Kelly and Greenwald to Vivek Ramaswamy and Van Jones. It is a, you know, idea that there could be a shift towards Democrats if we see an influx of, of immigrants. As someone who's a progressive, I don't like that the Democratic Party feels entitled to every vote from every person of color. I think that's ridiculous. They need to pass policies that are popular if they want to win. It's absurd that they think that the diminishing population of white people proportionally in the United States is something that's good for their party because of trends that they've seen in the past with the Latino vote and with the black vote, that this is going to be very good for them and they'll, they'll be winning all of the time. No, absolutely not. We saw the Arab vote leave the Democratic Party and say, or not leave the party, but say they wouldn't vote for Joe Biden after his handling of the conflict in the Middle East right now and the support of Israel. So they're, they're really not as entitled to this immigrant vote as they say they are. And I think what people like Van Jones are, tr are trying to point out from what I know about his, his wing of the Democratic Party 
is that it's been a, a problem for people like Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan as well, that this could be a reality, that Democrats would push for this to be a reality. The reason they're taking issue with Joe Rogan saying things like the Democratic Party is getting a bunch of immigrants into the country so that they vote for them and then they win elections. And that's why they just want open borders. It's, it's not an accurate depiction of reality. But I think a lot of the sentiments from people like Joe Rogan and Tucker Carlson have a weird racist undertone that like they don't want the immigrants to come for other reasons that like they're not cool with them coming in. I think it's fine to say you're not entitled to the immigrant vote. We can have a legal migration policy, but I wouldn't guarantee that they're voting for you. But I think some of the rhetoric around the Great Replacement, especially if you watch Tucker Carlson segments before the Buffalo shooting, it seems to be fear mongering about white people not being the major majority anymore and them losing political support. Yeah, I think the point that you make about them feeling uh, the left or Democrats feeling entitled to every immigrant vote is excellent because you have in that clip Van Jones is attacking uh, Republicans for being smug and condescending, but there's really nothing more smug and condescending than assuming any non-white person who comes into the United States would automatically vote for a Democrat, you know, and that, as you pointed out, is not something that they can take for granted. That may have been something that was sort of, uh, again, this rhetorical talking past each other may have been a little bit more true in years years gone by. But if you look at the policies that Democrats push now, you know, if you look even just um, something that comes up often, uh, the idea of law and order and rising crime, and you look in San Francisco when they had the recall election for the DA there, it was the majority minority districts that more overwhelmingly voted to remove the soft on crime DA than the white neighborhoods. And so assuming that immigrants are just automatically going to support Democrats, vote for them and support their policies is one of the more smug and condescending things you could say. And I think, you know, to your point about uh, the, the potential racial side of this, you know, I think it's equal parts, you know, if you're saying you're scared of an immigrant just because of the color of their skin, that's racist. But also if you're saying, like Joe Biden did in the 2020 election, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black, you know, obviously that's also making the same sort of determination just based upon the color of someone's skin. And so on both sides, I think you sort of have the extreme of this. And in the middle, you have people who say, again, we should have a legal immigration system in this country and these immigrants should be welcome. And if they have policies that they support, they should vote for them as U.S. citizens. But then you have these edges, again, like you were saying, just sort of talking past each other. And I don't think there's going to be a resolution to this, because I think you're going to see the left continue to use it as sort of a rhetorical bludgeon against Republican candidates. I think that became sort of the norm during the Trump administration. Uh, and I don't know if there's really any way to actually come to an understanding or a definition of what that actually means, uh, this great replacement theory. Yeah, absolutely. The interesting thing about this, it's such a political conversation right now because Joe Rogan was recently talking about this on his podcast with comedian Stavros, who pointed out his father's been in the country for over 40 years and still can't vote. It's actually difficult to migrate to the United States and get registered to vote. So it really highlights how so much of the conversations in mainstream media and in popular media are not representative of reality, there's actually not a major threat that a bunch of people will come into the United States and be able to vote in the next two major presidential elections. And so it's hilarious that so many people are talking past each other. And Vivek Ramaswamy making this such a, a central point in his campaign, I like that you point out this is mostly for attention. But if it's not representative of, of reality, why is a major presidential candidate talking about it and major news anchors arguing about it and talking past each other? I think you and I just arrived at a much more reasonable conclusion than even members of Congress when they talk about the, this issue arrive at. And I think that's really the crisis of American politics today is so many conversations aren't representative of real problems. And even the people who are supposed to be asking those questions and having the answers to them aren't even asking them. Yeah, I'm not sure if you just announced our joint congressional run, but in any case, uh, <laughs> we will be back with more Rising right after this.